Hello and welcome to another edition of Digital Dialogues from Maritime Gateway. Today we have a guest with us, Mr. Vivek Kele. Mr. Vivek Kele, founder of Team Global Logistics Private Limited, is a graduate in economics from the prestigious Ferguson College, Pune, with a post-graduation in business management. After working for 14 years, he started his own business of logistics under the name Team Global Logistics in year 2005. Now, Team Global operates in different segments, so sea freight, air freight, project cargo, CFS, postal shipping, and sea cargo consolidation. Today, the company has 18 offices in India and two offices in Bangladesh and East Africa, with an employee strength of about 800 plus people catering to logistic requirements of their Indian and multinational customers. Vivek Kele is a prominent speaker in various shipping and logistic seminars, conferences. He was president of Association of Multimodal Transport Operators of India, Amtoy, during 2015 and 2017, and also chairman of the Federation of Indian Logistics Association, FILA, during 2018 and 2020. He was former executive member of the Governing Council of the Logistics Sector Skill Council and former governing member of Narottam Moraji Institute of Shipping. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation and joining us today, Mr. Vivek. Welcome to the show. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ram Prasadji. And it's always a pleasure to connect with you and, uh, you know, always have a chat with you and always uh, happy to share my views and also hear your views because since you represent the press, you always have uh, some, you know, uh, more up-to-date information about the industry than what we do. But always happy to, you know, exchange uh, thank uh, you. information. Uh, let me begin the conversation um, uh, by asking you, so you are present in a lot of the segments which I mentioned. How is the business climate, uh, the environment globally and on the Indian uh, landscape with reference to some of these segments where you are operating? I'm not talking about a particular uh, team global business, but in general, these segments, how are they doing? So, uh, you know, uh, yes, we, we, we are a multi-segment logistics organization. And uh, what we have seen that uh, uh, post the pandemic, in, in, in today's scenario, uh, there has been a huge uh, capacity increase because uh, people were not sure, the logistics service providers, especially the, the carriers, you know, uh, I'm talking about the shipping ca carriers, shipping lines, uh, they thought that, uh, you know, the, the only way people will consume is, you know, uh, when the goods are delivered to their doorstep and people will not travel. And that's how, and there was a huge demand for uh, movement of goods from all over because uh, the people could not travel and uh, the, the only way to consume was, you know, have things delivered at your doorstep. So there was, uh, you know, a big gap between the demand and the supply. And uh, what happened was, uh, you know, so, so the prices went up and uh, then the shipping line thought that this is a good, uh, you know, opportunity to, uh, to in increase the capacity. So capacities went up. Then subsequently, the pandemic got over, uh, the people started traveling and uh, of course, the, the economic uh, stimulus which were given by various government, that also got over. So the consumption cycle, you know, uh, went under uh, a change. Uh, in fact, in fact, uh, the consumption has reduced. Several economies uh, are facing not exactly a downturn, but, uh, you know, a, a kind of a uh, steady state. So they, they, they're not, especially the European economies uh, is experiencing, uh, you know, a lack of uh, growth and the American economy, which is the biggest consumer, uh, they are reeling under uh, inflation. So there is a huge interest rate increase there. And uh, that is, uh, you know, all the costs have gone up because of interest rate going up, the inflation has gone up. So the cost of day-to-day -day living has gone up. So people are barely, you know, cover their expenses for the basic needs which is, uh, you know, uh, food, shelter and, uh, and and other basic things, uh, that, which is basically, you know, day to day subsistence. So, so it is, uh, so consumption going down, uh, you know, has affected the logistics sector, because we are end of the day, we are a tertiary sector. So if the consumption goes down, uh, so there's not there's no demand, if the demand goes down, the goods don't get, you know, uh, moved from one place to other place. So then uh, that affects the logistics service providers. And uh, so to answer your question in one line, uh, in the current context, uh, yes, uh, we are seeing that uh, there is a, a lull in demand, and uh, it will be another uh, maybe about a about a year before things shape up. And another thing that we are waiting 
uh, for is the Ukraine war. I think the European uh, the sentiments in Europe are a bit currently depressed because of the war situation. When that gets over, then I think the the, the demand cycle will pick up. So that yeah. is, I think I understand the global scenario, but uh, are you positive and bullish about uh, Indian scenario, domestic scenario? Yeah, so Indian domestic scenario is uh, in a $3 trillion economy and we want to move towards a $5 trillion economy. So the good thing about India is that we have 1.4 billion population. We are being globally in, in, the, in, the, in the global context uh, with the geopolitics that's happening as we speak. And the G20 summit is also happening as we speak. India has a very important role to play in the global economy. And we see more and more uh, procurement happening from India. So which should give us an advantage in terms of, uh, you know, keeping the buoyancy of the logistics services. And we will have, uh, you know, that uh, demand which will go up in time to come. In India, we are uh, we have that sweet spot uh, and having the benefit of, of being, you know, one of the, you know, one of the few or the only large economy which is growing at the rate of between, you know, 6 to 7%. So we have that advantage, but we don't, we can't ignore the fact that international logistics, we still have excess capacity. So, you know, although we, uh, you know, are at an advantage, uh, that advantage is, uh, you know, kind of overcome by the excess capacity, but we're still better off than a lot of our, uh, you know, other countries uh, globally. The, the mood is positive. Uh, the economy is growing. Uh, we also have a lot of you know, positive things to our credit, which is, uh, you know, the launching of Chandra and, and the Surayan. So, you know, that is essentially, you know, has improved the morale of our uh, national psyche. And uh, it is giving us, you know, another uh, kind of uh, impetus yeah, 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 in our thinking, in our abilities and reinforced our belief that uh, we are capable, we are a capable nation. And everybody is building onto that. And there is a new wave of enthusiasm and positivity, uh, which will help uh, us Indians continue to come together and achieve uh, larger scales. So we are more confident now as a nation. Uh, I have two questions based on the responses you gave. So going back to the global scenario and uh, being an international player, now what makes uh, more business sense now? Uh, what do you want to do? I think you are already uh, entered into Bangladesh or Africa, which uh, seems to be very promising uh, markets. Can you tell a little bit uh, more about uh, the operations uh, there and then what do you see in the years to come? Uh, you know, the, these are all growing economies, East Africa, Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. But in terms of uh, the growth opportunities, uh, their base is very low. So, you know, the efforts that you put, so it's important to have your, you know, uh, flag there in those countries. But the business opportunities are something which are, uh, you know, the, the growth is not as fast as in India or, or the volumes which are available in terms of absolute numbers are, are not as big as India because you, you really cannot compare Indian economy, Indian population to these countries. But the advantage that we have is that we, we go with a, you know, a certain level of, uh, you know, sophistication, certain, you know, certain experience that we carry with us. So we are able to, you know, bring those uh, you know, so sophistication in terms of services uh, and uh, ethical conduct and in terms of discipline of our operations in these, uh, you know, new markets that we are, we have ventured into. And uh, we are able to improve upon the overall uh, level of service availability in the segments that we operate with, with our approach. And uh, it, it is just one more addition in terms of opportunities or segments that you operate in. So, you know, it, it always helps. And there's a lot of learning also because when you're operating, uh, you know, in, in, in new territories, there's always something that you learn. Yeah, it, it helps in, in the overall growth uh, of the organization and also helps us to achieve some element with, with a varied experience of different economies operating in different offices. It also makes our organization a more mature organization. When we come to the, uh, uh, you talked about the buoyancy or a positivity of the Indian uh, economy, uh, Indian scenario. Uh, do you see the, the same kind of uh, uh, developments happening in terms of uh, our regulatory framework, policy framework, or uh, uh, the approach of the government as far as our industry is concerned? Because uh, uh, we have been uh, uh, claiming that we we, we jumped uh, uh, six spots on uh, the logistics uh, efficiency index. Uh, we, we are doing great and all that. So from your perspective, 
what has positively changed in our industry and uh, what are the specific changes that you would like to see so what is changed in our industry is basically the hard um, infrastructure so you know we have continuous addition of new roads we have upgradation of the railways we have the dedicated freight corridor which is which is on the verge of completion part of it is already completed uh, we have uh, new port terminals you know which have come up in the last 5 to 10 years and uh, some of the new ones are coming up like uh, after balarpuram the you know the, the, the that was one of the last ones uh, and then new capacity has been added at mundra the the miningham port is coming up i think there is some development on the east coast uh, when it comes to damra and uh, you know uh, uh, haldia etc so there are there are new opportunities and infrastructures being built there so i think in terms of the hardware you know we we have things in place there so that has greatly you know helped us to achieve efficiency in terms of movement of goods when it comes to uh, the software as in terms of the processes and systems i think we still have some opportunity for us to Uh, do that better because we are you know the whole concept of uh, community system or uh, seamless data flow has still not been achieved because we are still operating in in silos uh, government did uh, come up with the gati shakti portal and gati shakti uh, you know it's still it's like ondc what government is doing for the e-commerce gati shakti is something for the logistics industry so it it has its own uh, teething issues and I, i think there will be a time by which things will happen so the the seeds have been you know sowed uh, it will be some time before uh, we get a benefit of that uh, so once again is positive but uh, we are the, the kind of pace that uh, we expect as business people and the pace at which the environment moves is very different so there's always that gap is there uh, but we are positive that you know things will uh, fall in place and some things are taking place you know on ground as we speak i mean when i spoke when when, when i speak about gati shakti uh for, for for it to work it may take some time but at least we know that there, there is a road out there which we can take and the road may be bumpy at the moment but over a period of time it will even out because it's an uncharted territory for the bureaucracy for the government even for the private sector so things will it will take some take some time for the things to fall in place sir. years ago when we were talking about these uh, freight forwarding business and uh, uh, lo- especially logistics uh, service uh, uh, we said a lot of innovation has to come or a uh, lot of uh, uh, automation uh, digital initiatives have to come to differentiate you uh, among the competition so how are things now uh, till we see uh, the the operators are struggling or they are migrating they have become aggressive how how is this so adoption of technology has been little slow in our international freight forwarding and logistics industry uh because i think uh, without implementation of technology people are still able to sell their services and uh, there are no there there's no disruptions which has come in because i think one of the barriers for disruption to come in is uh, you know you need to have huge investments you need you, you know when i say huge investment for you to do disruption into be a, a, a large player uh because as a technology company you cannot do a disruption in in the logistics industry so as a large player like a large shipping line or large airline or large port port terminal because you are you know currently carrying a capacity you know and people have lesser choices so you you still end up using a service so you know end up selling your services or people consuming your services uh, with or without technology so there's no real reason for uh, large lost service provider to uh, you know up their technology quotient not that they are not doing anything but they are doing it at a much much lesser pace so that is the reason penetration of technology has uh, in been little slow in our international freight forwarding and logistics industry vis-a-vis maybe e-commerce or in other industry where the technology penetration is much higher because technology is a driver there you know and, and there's a disruption technology is able to disrupt those industries because there's nothing like e-commerce did not exist before whereas international transportation movement of good has always been in existence uh, so there is nothing new uh, you know that is being done uh, or being achieved here it is just that and everybody is you know more or less giving the same level of service with with some minor variation here there is nobody who is doing something very extraordinary and if individual operator is offering some extraordinary technology solutions 
environment uh, you know is not ready uh, you know to adopt it because you know e- even if you are a large service provider like a shipping line or a, or a, or a port terminal or only the in domestic for example indian customs that they 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 need to be aligned with all other service providers and everybody has to have the same technological quotient for adoption of technology so as individually uh, then when you are when you implement technology uh its impact is much lesser but when everybody adopts that same technology the impact is much higher so i guess you know that's where these initiatives of you know community service initiatives of you know gadi shakti platform will will, will help you know improving the technology question across all the players and that will really benefit the the shippers uh, as well as you know uh, and help help in bringing down the transaction cost another another challenging scenario what we see is uh, the supply chain uh, services integration like now uh, shipping lines uh, have got into uh, almost every sphere of activity uh, cfs operations they are partnering with container terminals they are uh, operating trains and they are into air freight uh, so how how bad it is for a logistic service provider or a freight forward we have been uh, discussing this for quite some time that uh, how will it impact freight forwarding now it seems more aggressive and uh, so what could be the impact yeah it is interesting to see uh, so how it will impact the you know in the indian context you know there is uh, the market is growing so since the market is growing the impact is not is not felt to the way it has because even if they are uh, you know the shipping lines are offering the you know end to end solutions Uh, there is always new business uh, which is available for the freight forwarders so if they lost something to the shipping lines you know they have gained something somewhere else and uh, there is a limitation to which a shipping lines uh, kind of business with the shipping lines can service they can only service large shippers you know maybe having 50 or 100 containers a month i mean that's the threshold anything below that they just don't have the you know infrastructure and the know how to handle the smaller customers and that's where uh, technology can be used where you know customers can go on to their portal and you know but firstly they don't have that those portals and and that you know uh, self service kind of platforms are not ready to begin with or available and two even, even if there you know whatever little is available there is no incentive for the shippers to do it because at the same or or a lesser cost some other service provider is giving giving them giving them a service at their doorstep very individualized service because this is still a very people uh, you know oriented industry and uh, people are able to give services at um, at at a nominal cost uh, very personalized services to answer your question you know very shortly yes in the indian context uh, it has not made much impact as of now uh, of course they, they they have they they have been pitching and targeting large shippers but there is other business available for the freight forwarders so there is no uh, real impact as yet only when the when the market bottoms out or when there is no growth in the market then we'll have a challenge you know that everybody is you know running after the same piece of pie and that's where the the pinch will be felt currently the pie is getting bigger and bigger so you know even if you take a small slice away it is not impacting uh, you know the the freight forwarders in in the way that it should have otherwise so coming to the uh... multimodal uh, transportation uh, you also have been a champion of this multimodal transportation uh, uh, in fact in the true sense where are we achieving the multimodal transportation and uh, uh, what still government has to do to really enable uh, the multimodal transportation so multimodal transportation is actually already happening when you move the container by road and load it onto a ship is multimodal transport or you move it by rail put on the ship is multimodal transportation <laughs> uh i think what is most important in multimodal transportation is that whenever the mode of transport is being changed rail to sea sea to road or road to you know rail uh, you know what is the cost and what is the time for it so i think that's where uh, you know it system sophistication in terms of handling equipments uh, good quality infrastructure uh, come into the play so multimodal transportation is happening uh, at the same time i think there's a huge opportunity for it to be improvised and improved upon uh, so the penetration you know uh, is there uh, we still have huge amount of shippers who sit at the hin- you know sit in the hinterlands and they are able to uh, seamlessly uh, you know undertake the activity of 
uh, import or export unless the multipolar transportation did not exist you know they would not have been able to do business and it is growing so i think it is just a matter of you know achieving a higher higher level of sophistication uh, which 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 helps to reduce cost and time is something that we need to concentrate on when when it comes to multimodal transportation so the modal switch has to be uh, you know we, we we have to apply our mind and uh, collective energies to ensure that the modal switch is smoother cheaper and faster coming back to uh, team global so uh, can you give me an insight into uh, what are your plans for the short term and long term environment is one area that we are very you know serious about and uh, we have uh, you know embarked on a esg initiative uh, as you would know that uh, we run uh, india's first green container freight station and now we are taking those uh, that particular agenda across our offices so we are uh, you know all our new offices or whenever we do do the furnishings they are all green interiors and now we are also you know working on concept whether how we can uh, you know help our customers reduce their carbon footprint how we can offer green transport solutions so this is all you know in in the thought process uh, at the moment but uh, in terms of uh, you know green infrastructure i think that's what we already have in place now how do we offer green you know uh, carbon credits how do we offer green transportation solution uh, that is something that we are very actively you know uh, discussing and uh, seeing whether we can you know offer it to our customers and you know the other uh, aspect of esg is the you know the the social and and the governance out of it so be be gender diversity be it uh, you know offering better uh, working conditions uh, equal equitable working conditions uh, equitable pay uh, uh, is is something that we are uh, you know continuously evaluating our policies uh, and we are ensuring that we are ahead of the curve uh, and ensuring that our uh, you know uh, stakeholders be it internal stakeholders or external stakeholders uh, are beneficiaries of our esg practices so that's one area that we're looking at uh, in the, in the short term and but, but this is more of short term to medium term because you know it's not something which can do which, which you can do over, overnight but it will take some time for things to roll out and in in the long term basically we are looking for opportunities in logistics uh, growth in terms of infrastructures uh, whether we can have more presence in which areas so you know so that's being continuously evaluated uh, we are also looking at increasing our presence uh, on the air freight side looking at um, if we can uh, you know do some uh, acquisitions uh, to uh, increase our presence on air freight so these are some other things that we we are continuously looking looking at uh, betterment uh, and growth so all our actions and thoughts uh, are uh, you know engineered towards uh, you know making this happen wonderful focusing on esg and uh, uh, the sustainability initiatives and uh, gender equality these are the things that when we are moving into the next level of uh, global operations uh, these are the things that an organization today everything is about how organization culture that is very very important so wonderful yeah so, and it also gives a you know when you very speak about environment because a lot of uh, you know customers or your own employees they want to do something but they don't know what to do so you know a framework of an esg really helps them to actualize their you know goals individual goals also so that it brings about a feeling of belongingness uh, and attachment loyalty to the organization it, it it is a it is a very important factor that is helping us you know with uh, building a, a better team and a more more conscious team on that uh, positive note uh, vivek thank you very much for joining us today and uh, sharing your thoughts on a uh, lot of issues ranging from uh, global business uh, environment uh, to the uh, indian uh, uh, economy and uh, the specific industry related issues thank you very much yeah it was a pleasure as, as always uh, mr ram prasad and uh, thank you for having me over and uh, we wish your publication the very best uh, for all your endeavors thank you thank look forward to keeping in touch namaste namaste